This is our boat now. It, this is our boat. This Endeavor 32. It's ours. Yeah. Guess how much we paid for it? Nothing. Zero dollars. After renewing the boat's registration, obtaining boat insurance along with unlimited boat U.S. towing, and doing as much engine maintenance and cleaning as possible, it was time to attempt the 300 nautical mile trip from Titusville to St. Petersburg on the newly and appropriately renamed SV Freebie. As you can imagine, nothing was perfect on the boat, but we decided to set off anyway, taking the ICW and the Okeechobee waterway to St. Petersburg because we felt it was the safest route given the circumstances. We had some time off over Thanksgiving break, so we set off with the intention of reaching St. Pete in four to five days. On day two, we entered the Okeechobee waterway and went through our very first lock. I have to admit, it felt a little weird to be on a freshwater river in a sailboat. Almost unnatural, really. I had always felt sailboats were meant to sail open water, not motor through narrow waterways and navigate locks and drawbridges, although I'm grateful for the experience. Honestly, I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm on like a Bush Gardens ride or something right now. Yeah, I was told that the turbulence here was a little bit uh, sketchy. So we're currently taking cover because we just had a squall kind of come through while we were motoring. Threw out two anchors. I uh, just saw some lightning, so we didn't want to be kind of at the helm and, and everything. So we just, I don't know, kind of afraid of afraid of that, I guess. But uh, so we just took cover, anchored for a little bit. It looks like it should be a small little squall that's going to be coming through and should pass right through. And then we should be able to move on to our anchorage for the night. While we were motoring, we realized uh, we've, you know, we've done a Oh, kind of a water test on this boat. Uh, it's never had any type of leaks anywhere. It supposedly has new through hauls, uh, new bottom job and everything like that. Well, the intake or the inlet for the diesel has start sprung a leak. So it's got, I don't know, it's probably leaking maybe a, a cup an hour or so. So, but it's been going straight into the bilge. And I've just been keeping an eye on it. That's why this is open right now because just keeping an eye on the water level in the bilge from that through hull. I think we're still okay as long as we keep checking on it and the automatic bilge pump should still work. feet we've checked with multiple sources multiple locations our mast height should be four or at least our height over the water should be 43 feet so we should have six feet of clearance yeah six feet of clearance we're barely moving. yeah we're not moving we're going a knot and a half right now <laughs> i feel pretty confident i love that there's no there's no height posted all right, we're under a knot. <laughs> 89 hundredths, 84 hundredths. 6.30 in the morning, this is a good way to wake up. <laughs> oh, we're good. We're good. Oh, you're good. Oh, my 
god. All right, now gun it. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. All right, you're so close to the right, babe. Come I'm, on. I'm more worried about what's above me, but. Yeah, no, you're fine though. Now we know. <laughs> Holy shit. Day three was actually the best day we had on the water. Everything was going great. We fit under the 49 foot bridge. We got to cross Lake Okeechobee, which felt amazing, like being offshore again. We were getting the hang of going through the locks and we were making really good progress because after we got through the lake, we were going with the current and our speed over ground averaged about seven and a half knots. All that being said, the day could have definitely had a better ending and you'll see why I'm saying this shortly. actually see the first boat that I've seen since getting on the lake way out there it looks like a power big power boat hauling ass so should be here pretty soon Lock. We're on the east side at the Dolphins uh, approaching from your east. Thank you, sir. Hey, guys. So we are out here. Well, you can't really see it. But right behind us back there is the Ortona lock. We just went through it and our engine just completely quit. Uh, figured it might be a fuel issue. We, I've already changed the filters. I've done a bunch of work on it. All, all this standard maintenance on the engine has been done. Fuel, fuel filters, oil, uh, coolant, uh, all three fuel filters actually. And oil filter, mm -hmm. just all that impeller, all that general maintenance stuff. And the engine was running great and all of a sudden it just quit right here and we are stuck and we are gonna try to we we throw we threw the anchor and we're gonna try to get over to, the get over to those mooring dolphins right behind me and we're pumping up the dinghy behind us to bring a line over there because we're currently anchored and we're gonna tie up Waiting in between on towboat us to come yep. at eight tomorrow morning Yep, so we tie, we called Boat US and they're gonna come tow us at eight in the morning, but we've gotta obviously stay the night here. We're fine, uh, it's just annoying. annoying. It looks like they're probably gonna end up taking us to Fort Myers to leave the boat, leave the boat somewhere and this trip is a fail. <laughs> It's a complete failure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> no sugar coating that one. Um, so. Sorry for the cell phone footage. We've got so much stuff out in the cockpit that we don't know where the GoPro is and we're losing light. So yep. you get cell phone footage. You get cell phone footage. And we tried working on the engine for about an hour or two and yeah. just troubleshooting different things and. Re changing filters. I, yeah, I, I think it might be a fuel pump issue, but and we don't have a we don't have a we don't have the ability to fix that. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a replacement fuel pump. We replaced fuel filters uh, again we had extras of those we had extras of all the normal stuff i hope and a prayer um but yeah all right so we are just waiting here now and spending the night at anchor right outside the ortuna lock and waiting on towboat us so i had to cut that last transmission short because it was towboat us updating us with some information but they should be here in the morning 8, 9 a.m. or so, they said, and they're going to tow us to Fort Myers, potentially. And that's pretty much it. So we're just going to try to make the best of the night here. We can't do anything except wait. 
This is what happens when you get a free boat. Don't get free boats. Although I do recall we paid for a boat. That also that also had a bad had, engine. Yeah. <laughs> We're so. just out of luck with engines. Engines suck. All right, so we are currently being towed. It is 9.51 in the morning. Towboat US got here about 9.30. Uh, we're doing about eight knots uh, being towed and they're gonna tow us to Fort Myers. Along the route, they're gonna send us information about boat yards that we can put the boat up at and, well, to get fixed and you know we can leave and get back to Tampa and figure out what to do after the boat's put up. So uh, that's basically it. This is our gonna be our view for the next, I don't know, seven, eight hours probably, so we'll see. What do you eat when you have no fridge, no stove that works? Old school <laughs> salted meat. almost at Legacy Marina in Fort Myers. That's where we, we're gonna end up. We've got a slip for two weeks. Uh, and actually my dad made a bunch of calls and came through for us uh, when the Boat US guy couldn't. So the Boat US guy was looking for marinas and everything and, and he was unable to find one that was open and willing to take a boat in train for you know a few weeks or until the boat was fixed. But for some reason, my dad got on the phone and made a couple calls and found one. So I very much appreciate it. I was I was on the phone with the insurance and everything, just making everything, making sure everything was all right. But yeah, so it looks like everything's working out, you know, as best as it could. We're gonna be stopping Legacy Marina in Fort Myers, and I guess it's like downtown. So we're probably gonna grab a bite to eat, and then uh, our my mom's actually gonna pick us up and bring us back to Tampa. And we're gonna plan on coming back down here probably two weekends from now. Uh, it's about, I think it's about an 18 hour sail from here to St. Pete. So uh, we're going to plan on doing that later. later. So uh, one of the things that we were kind of looking forward to and it didn't end up happening was uh, Ryan and Kelsey from, as you can see right here, Abandoned Comfort. Yeah, we're like we're going to actually board at La Belle, the free dock on the Okeechobee waterway and do the last leg of the trip with us. But Obviously that didn't end up working out because of the engine issue and everything. We kind of told them to, to stay home <laughs> but uh, until we got this figured out. But they bought their dog a life vest. They bought their dog a life vest, which is really cool, and they have yet to be able to, to use that. But I think we'll be inviting them out maybe for the, the last leg from Fort Myers to, to St. Pete. But they may be busy, they may not, but I will throw the invite out there. And if they, if they join up with us, that'd be, that'd be great. We'd very much look forward to that. So, and that's it. So, for now, Jordan out. Do you have anything to say about this experience, Randy? Um, it was definitely an experience. I mean, it was beautiful pretty much the whole way. There were some bug attacks at some points, but other than that, make, make sure you have bug spray if you do this. Um, make sure your engine doesn't quit on you, but be prepared for if it does. I definitely am very happy that we have Towboat US um, services and I don't know, I mean just be prepared, but if, if, you're, if you are prepared it's going to be a cool experience. I don't think that the Okeechobee waterway is anything to shy away from. There are some things like Jordan and I were talking about how if we had gone the Keys route, because at one point we had talked about doing that that at least if the engine had gone out we would have had the opportunity to sail like you have that backup whereas on the Okeechobee waterway you don't so it's something to consider and think about um, if you're planning a trip around the state of Florida but yeah that's about it so Randy out there you go Legacy Harbor and Marina was really nice, but I have to admit we felt a little out of place being towed in on a boat that we literally got for free. As you can see, we were surrounded by mostly million dollar motor yachts. We're really grateful that the mechanic that services the marina came out two days later and actually fixed the engine. 
It ended up being a corroded connection to the fuel pump and only about $200 to fix, most of that being labor. As soon as we could, we ducked out of the ICW so that we could sail offshore on the three mile line the whole way to St. Petersburg. If you don't recognize these awesome humans yet, that's actually Ryan and Kelsey from the YouTube channel Abandoned Comfort. They're good friends of ours and we're grateful that they were able to join us on the final leg of the trip. A link to their channel will be in the description and you should definitely check them out if you haven't already. Freebie, as in the boat that you're looking at right now, is actually going to be featured in their next episode, so stay tuned to their channel as well. Finishing up the last leg of this trip, Fort Myers to St. Petersburg. Ryan and Kelsey are out here and we are traveling at 1.6 knots. Crushing it. Crushing it. Flying. It's pretty awesome. It's a beautiful day. Can't beat it. <laughs> a little more wind would be nice. Just a little. Just a little. Bit. <laughs> Just a little. I'm about to jump in the water though because it's hot. It's getting hot out. Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little while So be here as the night starts falling Let my fingers walk over your head We got nothing to be scared of I'd rather be with you Always in your hand We're all sitting here. We just pulled in to the marina apartment complex or whatever. We're at the place I'm keeping my boat now. And we're just waiting on an Uber. And we're all tired, hungry. And we've been on a boat for, what, 20 hours? Um, 22 hours? 22, yeah. 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 21, but then we got off. We're literally sitting on the side of a road <laughs> waiting for an Uber right now. Say hi, Randy. You said say hi to Randy. Say, say hi, Randy. Oh, okay. Hi. She said hi. All right, guys, that's it. Pretty, pretty boring. We're going to go get food. Thanks for watching guys. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and or subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't noticed yet, we actually reached our subscriber goal very abruptly, and because of this, we haven't yet had a chance to do the live mana overboard drill that we promised a while back, but as soon as the conditions are right, we'll film it and post it. I wanted to thank everyone again for the awesome support. We're forever grateful and hope to keep creating content that you guys enjoy. Thanks guys. See you next time.